Welcome to the good news for today. Brad Solomon here at the Vosges Rocks in Aguadosi, California. A beautiful wilderness area with a beautiful rock formation. I believe today that we the people need to hear some good news for today. How many feel that in this time and in this hour that we've heard a lot of news about turmoil, despair, unrest, violence and destruction all over the world. Don't we need to hear some good news? Well this program, the good news for today, is designed to look and capture good news for man today. Good news for our society today. Good news for we the people today. Don't we need to hear some good news to give us hope? You see, even though there's turmoil in this world today, even though there's violence and destruction in this world today, there still is many good things happening. There still is a lot of good news happening today. And we need to hear good news to give us hope. You see, if we just hear turmoil, violence, and destruction, it brings despair and a sense of hopelessness in our lives. But if we hear good news and focus our hearts on some good news, it'll give us hope. It'll give us vision. It'll give us life. We need life today. It isn't that we're ignoring the bad news. It means that we're focusing on the good news that will give us vision and will give us hope. You know, the Bible declares in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, it says, without a vision, the people perish. You know, the New International Translation says that without a revelation, the people cast off restraint. You know, a paraphrase says, without a vision, the people run wild. We need a vision. We need a goal. We need something to set our eyes upon and our direction upon. We need somewhere to go. The Bible declares in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If there's no vision, if there's no knowledge, if there's no, no uh, goal to shoot for, people lose hope. Today we need hope. And today we are here at Vasquez Rocks in Aguadosi, California, a beautiful desert wilderness in the Southern California area. And as we look here at this wilderness that you can see all around me today, beautiful rock formations have been created by volcanic activity. Geologists and scientists have concluded that tremendous volcanic activity and earthquake activity is what created these rock formations. Now we are right down the middle of the San Andreas Fault that creates tremendous earthquakes from time to time in the Southern California area. But you know, in the midst of the earthquakes of life, in the midst of the despair and the things that people are dreading and are hearing about in the world today, there's good news. There's good news. And on the good news for today, we are going to see out in this wilderness area today the good news of why our forefathers came to America. Why did our forefathers come to America? Why did they come from England and from Europe to wildernesses like this? Why were they willing to leave hundreds of years ago the comforts of their homes? Why were they willing to leave the conveniences of their lifestyles already there in the United Kingdom and in Europe? Why were they willing to leave all those comforts of home and convenience to come to wilderness areas like this on the East Coast? And why did the pilgrims come over on those ships making those maiden voyages? Why did they come over to America and land on the area in Virginia Beach that's known as Virginia Beach today. Why did they do that? Why did the pilgrims come over and sign the Mayflower Compact and leave England and Europe to come over to this America in wildernesses like this where there was no comforts of home, no conveniences, and none of the things that they had enjoyed in their homeland? I believe that they had a vision. I believe that there was something motivating their hearts. There was a hope there was something motivating them to come to this new world. When the pilgrims came over from their homeland, from England, and landed on the area in Virginia that's called Virginia Beach today, and signed the Mayflower Compact, 
What did that Mayflower Compact declare? The Mayflower Compact. In the name of God, amen. We whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God, of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King Defender of the Faith, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith and the honor of our King and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid, and by virtue hereof do enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices from time to time, as shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience, in witness whereof we have hereunto subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November, in the reign of our sovereign Lord King James of England, France and Ireland, the 18th and of Scotland, the 54th, Anno Domini, 1620. Friends, when our forefathers came over to this country several hundred years ago, leaving the conveniences and the comforts of home to come to a wilderness area like this, which is now known as Virginia Beach, Virginia, almost to start afresh, literally, we can see in the Mayflower Compact the words that express the heart of their vision what motivated them to come over to start afresh. They declared in summary, in the presence of God and one another, we covenant and combine together by the grace of God, for the glory of God, for the furtherance of the Christian faith. They came over here to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They came over here to have freedom to worship God. How do we know this? I believe our very currency declares the vision today that our forefathers had when they came over to this country. Our very currency today declares, in God we trust. In God we trust. You see, friends, if the Mayflower Compact declared that in the presence of God and one another, we combine and covenant together our efforts for the glory of God and by His grace to the furtherance of the Christian faith. And because our very currency coined the saying, in God we trust, I believe the very American saying, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness was birthed with the vision of our forefathers that was declared, in God we trust. They came over to this country from the tyranny of the political system in England. They came over in this country to be free from the religious system of the Anglican Church. They wanted to be free to worship God. They wanted to have a free society where they could say, in God we trust. Their vision was in the American saying, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They wanted life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Abraham Lincoln declared, America has never had a true definition of liberty. Abraham Lincoln, one of our forefathers and one of our early presidents himself declared, America has never had a true definition of liberty. We need to understand the true definition, the true source of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I believe the Declaration of Independence literally shows that vision and the heartbeat of that very event. Friends, the Declaration of Independence in Congress July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them, 
a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect the safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and assertions pursuing invariably the same object invinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. Towards the end of this Declaration of Independence, it declares, We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assemble appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world, for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown, and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. The foregoing declaration was, by order of Congress, engrossed and signed by the following members. Friends, the Declaration of Independence penned the heartbeat of our forefathers. The reason, after they came over to America for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, why they had to be free and independent from the tyranny of the English political system. The source of that and the covering of that was what they penned in the very end. Freedom, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, independence with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence.